So let's say we want to build an app that allows users to upload documents, PDF documents, and ask those documents questions in natural language using AI and a technique called RAG. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And it's a technique used to enrich AI models with external data without having to fine tune the AI model itself. So before we get started, we need to be clear on what the requirements of this app would be. We're going to keep it very simple. And for the architecture, I'll only talk about the components of the architecture and not necessarily go into how to scale that particular architecture. We can talk about scaling maybe in a different video. So the first thing we want to be able to do with this app is we should be able to upload documents. Right? So these docs would be our PDFs. We should be able to upload docs. And then the second thing the app should allow us to do is we should be able to ask questions right, of the documents we have uploaded. And these questions should be in natural language, right? So you ask plain English questions and then you get your response. So these are the two requirements we're going to, to focus on as we talk about this particular application. Upload documents, ask questions. Now let's look at how the architecture would, would work. Now with this mobile app, so it's a mobile app. So let's say we have the mobile app here. The first requirement we need to meet is the ability to upload documents. Now, what happens with the RAG application is that when you upload um, documents or you add data to be used when you're asking questions, you need to process that data. So it's not just keeping the data as PDF or raw text, it changes, it embeds the data, right? So we need to use some kind of text embedding in order for us to be able to store the, the data in such a way that the meaning of the data is kept. So that when we ask it questions in natural language, we can take the meaning of the question, match it to the meaning of the data we have stored, which has come from our documents, and use that to ask our AI model to give us an answer or to process that data and give us a response. So we have to upload the document and process that document in terms of generating the embeddings for that particular document before it becomes useful in this app for natural language questioning. So let's say we want to use GCS, for example, to handle our object storage. So GCS simply means Google Cloud Storage we can have libraries in the app that just help us upload the data to GCS. Once the object is uploaded, and this would be your, you know, your document, your PDF, you take that from your app, upload it to GCS, and you get your URL back pointing to that particular document. Now we take that um, URL or rather URI uh, is pointing to that document and upload it to our application. So I'll draw this as the perimeter within which our application operates. Let me just make this box a little smaller so I can manage the space. So this is GCS and here is right, the logical boundary for my application. So everything inside this boundary is within our own application that we're building. Anything external is an external service. Now, we're going to have our APIs running here, which is the, the backend of the application. So if we have right, our API backend over here, once a document is uploaded to GCS, we need to tell our API that we have a new document. And once we get the URI, we upload that to our API. This API now knows that, okay, a document has been uploaded. And remember, we don't just upload the document, we have to process it so it's ready for natural questioning based on meaning. 
after we do our embeddings and all of that. So what it needs to do is once a URL is uploaded, it knows to go to GCS and pull that document in so that it can process it. Now, processing it, we'll need to use some models, you know, text embedding models over here. So I would have our text embedding here. So I can say our text embedding model. Um, this is something we can run in Olama. And yes, sounds like my name, Bulama, Olama. So we could run that text embedding model in Olama. There's several of them, um, several text embedding models you can use. But the idea is once we have a, a document uploaded and the app tells us, okay, here's a new document with the URI, we go to GCS, pull the document, and then use this embedding model to embed to generate our embeddings for that particular document. So you might have 10 pages, and then you decide on what, on what the chunk size would be. Are you going to go by page? Are you going to go you know, by paragraph? Whatever you decide, um, you, something you need to keep on trying to get the best chunk for your, for your data. Now we use the text embedding to generate the embeddings. Now once we have those embeddings, we need to now store them in a database. And in this case, it's not just any kind of database. We need a vector database. And a good example here would be PG vector, which is um, a variant of Postgres. So we have PG vector, and this is our, our DB. So document is uploaded, we fetch the document, we process it and generate the embeddings, and then we store the embeddings in our database. Now, at this point, we know that the document has been processed and stored. The meaning of those chunks based on the document have been stored in our vector database, which means if we want to retrieve data from the database based on the meaning of what we want to match against, we're able to get that data back. And with this, we're able to meet the first requirement, which is the ability to upload documents. Now, the next thing, which is the next requirement, is someone asking their PDF a question in natural language. Now, this would certainly come from, from the app, right? So they would ask a question, and we're supposed to give a response based on the data we have stored, which is external to any model, AI model we use to answer that question. So when you ask the question, what we need to do first of all is take that particular question, the text that has been asked, and let me see if I can give this a different, so any of these, any line that is like this is the question asking. So we take the, the text for the question, and then we embed that same question, right? So we embed it. When we embed the question, we are able to take that embedding and ask our database to give us all documents or all the embeddings that match the question being asked. Now, when we were storing the embeddings, we're storing them alongside the plain text, so we know what embeddings are related to what parts of the text in the PDF. So your question is asked, we embed the question itself and use that to match in our vector database to get the meaning closest to what that question is. When that happens, we now have the text that is closest in meaning to the question that the user is asking. Now, the next thing we need to do is take all that data, give it to an AI model, and have it give us a proper response in natural language. Now, in this example, we can use an external model. So we could have models running 
here I would say we have a model running in Grok. So let's just say Grok is here. Grok is a service that allows you to you know, have inference. You can store, they have multiple AI models and you can use them to, to do your inference. So from our own API, once we have the, the question and the data from the PDF that matches that question in meaning, we take all of that and send it to our AI model. Now, here we could have you know, any kind of model running. So let's say we're using Gemma. So let's say we're using Gemma 9B, for example, as the model, but it's being hosted on Grok, which is external to our own application. Now, what we're sending to, to Grok or Gemma, the AI model, is the question and all the data that matches the meaning of that question that we had embedded and stored in our vector database. Now the AI model here would have a prompt telling it, take this data and use this data to answer this question that the user has asked. So the AI model would do its thing and then send us back a response. That response would have the answer to the question that the user is, is asking. Right? So we take that answer and then we send it back to the user and then the user sees you know, the, the answer to their question in the app. So this is a very simple, straightforward um, architecture. Your API backend will certainly have so many other modules inside it that handle, you know, user account creation, document management, because you would have server documents. You want to be able to allow users to view which documents they've uploaded allow them to you know, add more documents, delete documents, all of that logic would be stored in our API backend here. But the key thing is that all data uploaded for natural, question, for natural questioning has to be embedded using a, a, a text embedding model, which allows us to take the text, find the meanings in it and store it in a vector database, which later allows us to ask questions, which have also themselves have been converted into embeddings so that you can get the meaning that match, retrieve the data, take all of that, send it to your AI model and get a response. Now, there are different ways you can do this. This uses a model that is outside our own application. If you want, you could have the AI model running within your own service, within your own firewall, within your own servers. Um, and you can use something like Olama to, to run any model you have. So that way, you can actually take this whole architecture, this whole solution, and run it you know, locally in a data center. And it has no connection to the outside world, probably other than where the object storage is. And even your object storage, you can still bring it in as well and have objects stored within your application. So everything can be within a single uh, platform and have that running in a data center and, or even have it running locally on your, on your system if you want. So this is a simple architecture that allows you to build an architecture that supports a RAG mobile app that allows users to upload documents and ask questions of those documents. So thank you for watching. If you found any value in this, please share, um, add a comment if you have anything to add to this and like. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe.